In a few minutes we are going to board for a short crossing to a temple, often called the Pearl of Egypt or the Domain of Isis. So obviously I mean the Greco-Roman Temple of Philae. The original island of Philae had pilgrimages to the Temple of Isis for more than 20 centuries until the Emperor Justinian closed it in 540 AD. Pilgrims came from all over Egypt and from neighbouring countries. The island of Philae is located upstream of the first cataract of the Nile at 7 kilometres from Aswan, between the two dams. It has completely disappeared today under the waters of the Nile. But the monuments were saved and moved to the neighbouring island of Agilkia. Thanks to an incredible international cooperation coordinated by UNESCO, the 40,000 blocks of stone were disassembled, transported and then reassembled 300 metres away and 30 metres higher than the original site. It's an exciting adventure that I'm going to tell you about before visiting an almost deserted domain of ISIS on this June morning. Les gouvernements, les institutions et les fondations, publiques ou privées, ainsi que tous les hommes de bonne volonté, à contribuer, chacun selon ses moyens, au succès de la dernière étape d'une entreprise culturelle dont le monde entier a saisi la haute signification. There still remains a gem to save. That gem of Egyptian history that inspired poets of the last century, Philae. Since the construction of the first Aswan Dam in 1902, Philae was largely underwater nine months of the year, and visits were made by canoe. Once the Aswan High Dam was filled with water, the temple would have completely disappeared if UNESCO had not intervened. Christiane de Roche Noble Corps played a vital role in the rescue of Philae and other threatened temples. In June 1972, the construction of a coffer dam all around Philae began. The work took two years. First, they surrounded the island with a double barrier of steel. Then the space between the barriers had to be filled with sand, a difficult process as the sand pits were five kilometers away. Thousands of tons of sand had to be transported using a hydro-powered process. In April 1974, the barrier was completed and the pumping out of the water began. This drainage operation lasted several months. Meanwhile, on the island of Adjilkia, the site chosen for the temples was being prepared. Certain areas needed to be levelled, others to be enlarged and efforts were made to convey the impression of a floating island similar to that which had made Philae renowned. By the end of 1974, the island of Philae was all dry and the workers started removing the silt that had covered the monuments since the island had been submerged. Fissures and infiltrations were then discovered and the task took months to complete. 
but there was still a layer of silt reaching four meters in some places. In order not to damage the temples, the work was completed by hand. Once the silt was removed and the temples cleaned up, they regained their natural beauty. It remained to ensure that after dismantling them stone by stone, the 40,000 sandstone blocks would be reassembled identically in their new location. The numbered stone blocks are ready to complete the journey to the island of Agilkia. It took many years to achieve this result. It also took a lot of money, $15 million, financed by donations to UNESCO from 23 countries. It's thanks to this international cooperation that since March the 11th, 1980, we can once again visit the Pearl of Egypt. In the next video, we will visit the Domain of Isis.